car and stumbled over my thin stick. Yeah, when I ski, I fall a lot, but I'm used to it, because in the early 2000s, I would fall into the piles of white powder almost every night. But the great thing about skiing is that, uh, is that you get better with every time you do it. Every run, you get better. The most important thing here is not to be spotted. Yes, you can fall, but everyone around should ignore that. And then you can get better by doing it again. You fell, no one said it was bad, then you did it again. After a good day of skiing, you can go down 14 or 15 times. That's why I'm surprised that R. Kelly is not a skier. <sighs> I'll be honest, I'll be honest with you. I didn't really like skiing, simply because everything is called. Everything around me is called when I'm skiing. It's awfully quiet while I'm skiing. I'm flailing desperately and sweating like a pig, exactly like doing this show. Maybe I'm not a big fan of skiing, but I'm a fan of wintry, cozy atmosphere, you know? Sometimes it is so great to drink some hot chocolate, build a snowman, write your name in the ice with P. That's what got me kicked out of Starbucks, actually. And you know what's gonna get you kicked out of your minds? Our prize fund. Show them the money, come on, show them the money. thousand dollars that's exactly how much money we have for you these these uh, night these days let's see these days so let's just imagine a mobile phone a smartphone on the palm of my hands so there will be questions so after question appears you'll have like 12 seconds to decide which of the following answer choices is correct then you tap the button with this answer choice and that's pretty much it so you should you must do this thing 12 times in a row you can start uh, answering on question number, I don't know, four or nine, just 12 in the row from the first one to the final one. Uh, and it is okay to be wrong at least once, as you already know, because you have an extra bonus life from the start of the game, but uh, as many friends as you bring in, that's how many bonus lives you can get, just that's it. Get your friends here, bring them to the game. So the more friends you have, the more friends you bought, brought to us, so the more bonus lives you initially have. So, uh, viewer count, let's take a look at another viewer count, it's 2,377 people watching us online. Thanks for being here with us this evening. So, uh, you can tell everything you want to on our chat, like, you know, you're a great guy, Victor, who's that girl, he'll be, he'll be much better than you, and so anyway, that's actually the point where I should say it's a great day for IQ option, it's a great day to expand your financial knowledge and therefore it's time to play the game. And you know what? I'm gonna tell that. It's a great day for IQ option, it's a great day to expand your financial knowledge, therefore it's time to play the game. Here comes question number one. Income received from selling goods or services over a period of time is called tax, debt or revenue. And please let me tell you something. We have just officially started. That's the final point where you can join us. You missed this moment, so you're out of the game. You can only watch us, but you can't play if you just missed this moment, this opportunity. So be opportunists and do the right step. So an amount of money that you have to pay to the government so that it can pay for public services is a tax a sum of money that you owe someone is a debt. Income received from selling goods or services over a period of time is a revenue. So, 1,516 people knew the correct answer. Thank you for being, for being so, for being so you. And here comes question number two. The primary producer of a country's coin currency is called mint, parliament, or mining pool. Let's take a look at our chat for the first time in this year. Daniel E says, South Africa, yes! That's actually what was on all of our minds in the studio. It's like six beautiful white people here. So the group of people who are elected to make a country's laws and discuss important national affairs is a parliament, a joint group of cryptocurrency miners who combine their you know, computational resources over a network, is a mining pool. A primary producer of a country's coin currency is called 
a mint. It has the consent of the government to manufacture coins to be used as legal tender. And 1,239 people knew the correct answer. Thank you for being so smart. So, are you such as handsome as you used to be back in the 2018? Hmm. I want to see your answers on the chat, please. But I still, I'm still giving you a chance of being as handsome as you were back then. So, question number three is here. The full name of this consumer goods company is Procter and who? Spencer. Gamble or Stanley? Isn't that too easy for question number three? I know. But maybe we can consider this thing as a viewer's gift. I know. That's so easy. That's our gift. That's, and nothing else we have for you. So, Marks and Spencer is a major British multinational retailer. Morgan Stanley is an American multinational investment bank and financial services company. The American Multinational Consumer Goods Corporation, founded in 1837 by William Proctor and James Gamble, is called Proctor and Gamble. And 766 people knew the correct answer. Thank you. And please let me remind you that if you gave a wrong answer, you have like five seconds after that to bring yourself back into the game if you have an extra bonus life. So just push that button in the corner of the screen on your phone and you are back. So here comes question number four. This derivative transfers the credit risk from one party to another. Weather derivative, energy derivative, or credit derivative. So many derivatives in one place. So just let's think about it. Uh, energy, credit, weather, everything fits good here, but there's nothing on the chat. What I can do here? Nothing. Just just what can I do? Nothing. Just, just take a look here. One, three, three, two, one. There's nothing on the chat, so. A financial instrument used by companies or individuals to hedge against the risk of weather-related losses is a weather derivative. A derivative, uh, a derivative contract based on an underlying energy asset such as natural gas, crude oil, or electricity is an energy derivative. A derivative that transfers the credit risk, credit risk from one party to another is a credit derivative. And 879 people knew the correct answer. That's actually how many of you, beautiful smart people, will witness question number five, which is just here, which is here. The founder of Litecoin is Vitalik Buterin, Charlie Lee, or Jad McCaleb. Hmm? So just let's, let's, let's give this chat one more chance. Uh, Sebastian B. just said, <sighs> pretty nice, thank you, Sebastian. General S. just said, GG, thank you, General. Uh, Nathan M. just said, hi, that's what I was looking for. Thank you, Nathan, hi. Vitalik Buterin is a Russian-Canadian programmer and writer, primarily known as a co-founder of Ethereum. Jed McCallib is a co-founder and the CEO of Stellar.org. Prior to co-founding Stellar, he founded and served as the CEO of Ripple. Charlie, or Charles Lee, is a computer scientist best known as the creator of Litecoin. And 406 people knew the correct answer. Thanks for your knowledge. Thanks for being so smart or so lucky or whatever you really are. So here comes question number six, and you're going to witness it right now. Don Worden's technical indicator is called the balance of, of what? Interests, system, or power. Is that my new thing? Or I used something on that back in 2018 now? Interests, system, power. So, <clears throat> the balance of interests. No, the balance of interest doctrine is based actually on the principle that conflicts of jurisdiction and interests between governmental organizations are decided based on the balance of interests between them. 
In photovoltaics, the balance of system comp comprises all components of a photovoltaic system, with the exception of photovoltaic panels. Don Ward Warden's indicator measures the market strength of buyers against sellers by assessing the ability of each side to drive prices to an extreme level. It's called the balance of power. And only 289 people knew the correct answer. And I have no choice but to remind you that if you gave a wrong answer, please, guys, use your extra bonus life, because 289 people is pretty, pretty tiny little quantity of people to witness question number seven. But here it comes anyway, question number seven. This index is based on the sum of unemployment rate and inflation rate. Misery Index, Big Mac Index, or Starbucks Index? Christopher C. just asked, how do I get the t-shirt? Hmm. I don't know. Do you really want to see me topless right now? I don't think he want to, but still, I can discuss this thing with my producer. Should I start? I'll find this out for you. Uh, and maybe you'll hear the answer to your question from the beautiful lips of our new co-host. She's gonna be here on Wednesday. And she tells you the truth. She tells you everything about our t-shirts. The Starbucks Index is a measure of purchasing power parity comparing the costs of a tall latte in local currency against the US dollar in 16 countries. The Big Mac Index measures the purchasing power parity between nations using the price of a McDonald's Big Mac equal to the sum of the inflation rate and the unemployment rate, the original misery index was popularized in the 1970s as a measure of America's economic health during a president's term in the office. So 233 people knew the correct answer. So are these questions so tough? Are they so difficult? I don't think so, but it's only 233 people will that's how many of you will witness question number eight, so come on, smart up. Question number eight. The former monetary unit of Spain, before adopting the euro, was lira, peso, or peseta. And here comes some um, geography lesson, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. That's, that looks beautiful, why I tell just that can clock. Anyway, so the lira was the former currency of Italy, Malta, San Marino, and the Vatican City, all of which were replaced back in 2002 with the euro. The peso was actually adopted as Spain's currency in the 15th century. Back in 1868, the peso was replaced with the peseta, which ceased to be Spain's legal tender in 2002 when the euro was adopted as the country's sole monetary unit. And only 155 people knew the correct answer. Guys, you should do something with that. Please, just, if you have this extra bonus life button, you know, in the corner of your phone, please tap this thing and yeah? bring yourself back into the game, please. Question number nine. This country became the world's largest wine producer in 2017. Italy, Spain, or France. Hmm? Hmm? You know, I, I quit everything, so I don't need any resolutions. You know, I don't drink, so I have no idea what you're talking about in here. So I quit drinking, I quit smoking, I quit drugs. So the, the only thing I have left is breeding Bengal white tigers, but I will never quit it. So these countries are the top three producers of wine in the world. In 2017, Spain became the third largest wine producer. It produced like you know, 32 million hectoliters of wine. Unexpectedly, France lost its leadership and became the second global wine producing country with something around 36 million hectoliters. Having produced 42 million hectoliters of wine, Italy topped the list of global wine producers in 2017. And the correct answer to these 
question was clear to 108 people. Thanks, guys, for being so... Are you handsome? Are you still handsome? I didn't see anything about that on the chat, so... Eh, still nothing here. Guys, that's all that I asked for. Just tell me, are you still handsome? Do I talk to guys and girls who are still handsome? As handsome as they used to be back in 2018? I hope so. Which number 10 is here? A portrait of Greta Garbo appeared on this currency back in 2015. US dollar, Norwegian krone, or Swedish krona? Clarence just said, I'm still handsome. Thank you, Clarence. Whew. That was tough waiting for that. Thank you. So at least one person is handsome, so that's for you, Clarence. A portrait of Greta Garbo, legendary star of silent films and early, uh, you know, talking films uh, in the 1920s and 1930s.
screens of your smartphone. So, once again, we'd like to congratulate you on winning some money, almost 18. Thanks for your time, thanks for your patience, and thanks for your knowledge, thanks for your luck, and thanks for your well-deserved success. Thanks for joining us during these broadcasts. See you next time, and as always, never stop thinking, and see you later. Goodbye, everybody.